interesting. On the same day of the evidence transfer as well, it was drizzling that morning. And by nightfall, there was thunder. I cannot believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. Yeah, indeed. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something with him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. Hmm. Well, it is a good point you brought up. Detective Goodman was the only one that didn't get demoted. And he was also a part of that case, so I was thinking, how did he keep his job? But I guess one reason would be that if he did get demoted, he would have been racist. He would have raised suspicion in the eyes of these commissioners. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. And not to mention that Angel Star was a full-time detective, so they fired her. And with Jake Marshall, given the fact that he was just starting, or at least that is what I gathered of so far, that he was also a beginner detective. He started working with his brother. He only got demoted to he only got demoted to being a police officer. Guarding the evidence room. They. Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean, Damon Gaunt. Alana Sky. Huh. I see. It is part of them hiding the forgery. Chief Detective Gaiman Gant and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that, too. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah. Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma, some Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Not a secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? Well, it sure did give me some more insight. And because of that, it gave me a theory as to why this all happened. The motive, the crux of the murder. But I cannot say for sure. For now, let's just say that it can be possible you weren't the only one who wanted to get the bond of this, Jake Marshall. There is a reason why Detective Goodman's locker was empty to begin with. It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in the court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence, and planned everything. That someone 
is Dave McGaunt. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Oh, I believe you, Jake. You are not the only one thinking that. He was given falsified evidence, without him knowing that it was falsified to begin with. And here I thought that all those rumors of him using falsified evidence all stemmed from Manfred von Karma's influence. But... I guess it's, at the very least, is not the only thing. It all started from that case. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. Mm. Yeah, it certainly blows. But we're still gonna have that uh, spaghetti lunch together. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Happy trails, partner. I'll be waiting for the day we will eat spaghetti. You got that right, hombre. Alright, well, in that case, let's go inside. Let's finally go inside and check the cheese office. And this place is always pretty empty. But today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Uh... Wait, is that... Is that Damon Gant or... Nah... It's probably that other guy. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the comfort room. Uh, f thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. Were well, the two prosecutors saying what you did, and the decision about what to do? About Mr. Edgeworth. Not to mention our statement to the media around tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. <laughs> Um, sir, we'd like to um, have a look around the Chief Gant's office. Just let across the halls of the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Uh, really? You mean, it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Uh, hey! You're right! You cannot go in there! It's off limits! Ow! You blew it, Emma. I see where the Tether Gunshot gets his unique charm. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? It's into the chief's office. Yeah, screw you, chief. We're gonna go there and we're gonna do our stuff. Woo! It's a pipe organ! Well, I can totally imagine Chief Gant using it. Woo! Where the fuck am I? In the chief office, in the chief's office, see? At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. Organ lessons? They used to call me Little Miss Bach. Oh, that's good. I thought. I thought I was a genius until they- I never gonna remember where C was. Hmm? Oh. Chief Gunt is here. Oh! It's you two! Uh, Ch Chief Gunt! He put that paper he was reading in his desk. Huh. Paper. <laughs> so, Mr. Wright, have you been swimming lately? Oh, trust me. If we had the time, we'd be swimming all the way to Honolulu. Because of this case, but we don't have time. Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I had my fa I had my hands full too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct. Atlanta's provocative statement. Prerogative statement. 
Oh, you mean about the fourth evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. <laughs> My, how time flies! See that big picture on the wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me! So, this is Mr. Marshall's brother. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Huh. Okay. We do get to commemorate. We do get to commemorate our work together. Something is not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. Oh. Oh my. Hmm. Well, it is a lovely picture. Damon Gant, Chief Gant. Where was this taken? Anyway, I like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to look up here, so let's go out together. Oh, uh, but this offense, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. Actually, hold on, before we continue this, let me just investigate this a little bit. Photo at the war ceremony of Gant, Lana, and Neil. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. <laughs> Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Uh, yes, sir! <laughs> no hurry up and get out! I have a meeting to attend! Like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gunn denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Oh! In that case, it's time for us to snoop around. See if we can get inside the, the office without getting caught. Oh, actually, yeah, let's go inside. Can we just go back over there and maybe uh, get inside without him knowing? Hey, Bo. Hey, come shoot my man. What's up? Have you like uh, ha have you seen Edward anywhere? The the gun show. Were you in a meeting? I was, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. Huh? What happened? What happened? If I was sitting so long in a meeting? Actually, I had to serve everyone coffee. Serve coffee? What a bunch of scumbags! Sounds like the Teta is still out of the, out of the loop. Say, have any of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. What do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battle between you two in court. Oh, that sounds serious. And I guess you don't know either. Where he is, that is. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. They have falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the sw oh, Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Okay, well... Can we talk more in detail about... Edgeworth's crisis? But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Yeah, well... Tell that to everyone else who thinks otherwise. Especially his enemies. Lana Sky is the Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? 
regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence he presents in court. Not only that. But as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going on about it, Mr. Edgeworth. Those who don't like him have been able to do anything because of this. Because of his amazing talent as a prosecutor. But now with this. Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only had that. But he's young. There's no better recipe I know of, of making enemies. Huh. Hey, Tick! Keep up the good work! Yes, sir. And go for lunch again sometime. My treat. Whoa. Hey. It seems that someone here is praising you, Mkamshu. That's nice. Yes, sir. You ought to take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Tuck? Yes, sir. Since you don't have any problem with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick around. Ah, of course. <laughs> you may have some... Like, some screws loose at some points, but generally you're a nice... You're a nice guy, you're a friendly one. You're the friendly type. You don't want to make enemies. Because, well, <laughs> you don't use dirty tricks. Anyway, I'm in a bit of a... I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Yeah, well, it's not the first time. Actually, I took a look at the fire file earlier, while the coffee was brewing. He seems generally concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did he find out anything? The only evidence Dork left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... And he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. It seems like the Gunshot never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um... Let's see... I think he had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. <laughs> Maybe you should show him the murder weapon. He might check his memory. Well, I don't know. When it comes to... Gumshoe being a detective. He does prove that he has some good deducing skills. However, maybe, like, it does seem that he has some problems with memory, <laughs> that is. <laughs> um, but hold on. Hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about the dark crimes. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just a run of the mill businessman. A businessman? What made, him, what made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes! We always transform him into an animal! An animal? He killed the man that witnessed this accident. Then he killed the lady who saw... A kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the body, a joker came up on the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Christ! That is such a complete 180! Since he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. Are you serious? I mean, it sounded like it all happened in the span of a minute or so. You're telling me that after all that, no evidence was left behind? So he turned himself in. Yes, but in a little bit of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. 
That crime was witnessed by someone too. But fortunately he was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. Yeah, it sure is. That last witness... It must mean ammo. Okay, well... This is actually something that I, w I wanted to do first. I wanted to... Present him the knife, so that we can... Jog his memory, because I'm pretty sure that if we do that, he's gonna tell us some more stuff. Um, about this, about this. Hey, don't tell me that! It has a tag attached to it with the label S9 Incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. I mean, did you hear? Chief, like, uh, Chief Gant came with it. Like, in the first day of trial. On the day Detective was murdered, the suddenly dis disappeared from the locker. And was found in the stage was Car Muffler. That's it! No, what is it? No, I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, that's lovely. Uh, what is it, detective? Quick, before you forget again. <laughs> okay, let's have more faith in his memory. He doesn't he doesn't forget that fast. I hope. <laughs> okay, well, now can we talk about this? Yeah, there you go. And this knife. It was Joe Darks, wasn't it? Mm, that's right. We traced it back to the store he brought it at, and it had his fingerprints on it too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? And that's where his lug ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken! Oh uh, yeah, you're right. On um, very, very, very close inspection, it does seem to have to be broken. Huh. I never would have realized it. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. Hmm? That's what did him in. What was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. What? You mean to tell me that the knife broke inside him? It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did 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 match Dark's knife? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Down to the last fiber. Hmm. That's pretty conclusive. Oh, news autopsy report. And the switch blade knife added to the court record? Oh, I guess they updated it. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. Hmm. The broken tip was found in the victim's body. It belonged to murder Joe Dark. Well, we didn't get the tip though. But we do have this. Let's see. Name of deceased, Neil Marshall, 27. I know that Jake told us that he was 27 years old. Date and time of death, February 19th, between 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Cause of death, single stab wound piercing heart slash lung. Assessment, died from loss of, died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. Okay, so it wasn't instant death, so to speak. That's all I do. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chit Count. <laughs> no, not that. 
It's not money, but it does concern the chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The chief's out now. The chief's out now. And his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's if that's okay. Well, I did detect his ID card and lock the door. What? Really? But if I let the civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Actually, I don't think we even need uh, your own ID card, Gumshoe, because we we do have our own over here with us, like uh, Detective Goodmans. No need to. We don't need to put you in danger of losing your job or anything like that. Breach of trust. Simply put, I be can't. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? You lost it at the Goodmans. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day that he died. Huh. Okay. Well, that pretty much destroyed our plan. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh. So, in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. Uh. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Something that would make him change his mind. I don't know, I mean, this is huge. I mean... I don't know if... If we are to use an ID card on the, on the off like at the office would it be registered somewhere like in a similar fashion to how we use the, the in similar to fashion to how we have the id card record because if it does then that would be pretty bad but if it doesn't then we could just go in there and well try to see if we can find anything and just get out of there fast before we get caught in that case, that would we would take that risk. But what else should we even present? <laughs> I mean, there's no way you can refuse this, Gumshoe. You have to do this for the blue badger. This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the blood stain on that evidence locker with his life. That's more than you can say about most officers nowadays. Well, you speak the truth, Gumshoe. But it, it doesn't change the fact that it almost screwed us over today. Some people do make mistakes. And the Blue Badger is no, is no exception to that. You would have saved us a lot of trouble that he had and gotten it so well. I have to admit, he's right though. Thanks to the Blue Badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. And the possibility that another murder took place prior to 5.15pm. Hmm. Okay, well... Let's see... About uh, the ceremony that happened two years ago, I, I doubt that you would remember that. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut! I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Sheesh! Hmm. 